Now playing devil's advocate, I think making movies anywhere yeah. is difficult. Sure. I think in Taiwan especially, I mean... Yeah. Hello. I'm Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan. And this is today we have a special guest. We have Victor and he has his YouTube channel called Dodo I Taiwan or Dodo Loves, Loves Taiwan. Loves Taiwan, yes. Yeah. And he on that channel he introduces all the cool places that he goes in Taiwan and like little things that he loves about Taiwan. Yeah, actually I it's more like that. I talk about it what it makes life everyday life like simple life in taiwan amazing because that's what i love about taiwan yeah. like simple things like, yeah great. and we did a, a little short video introducing us going to a film festival and watching a film there and you can watch it on his channel victor <laughs> love taiwan do do love taiwan so you can go check out his channel and watch that video where we talk a little bit about ourselves and a little bit about uh, the film but we're going to go in detail in the film we watched, which is called The Hedgehog Effect. Yes, but, but in, I don't know why it was, I still have it in my mind that it was like 2049. Well, I think that's so, the... Yeah, it's weird. It's, so it's, it's at a film festival, but it's actually a pilot for a show that's going to be on a streaming service. Um, and it has two names. One's called 2049 and the other is called The Hedgehog Effect. But it's also more than just the pilot because it's three episodes. It's right. the first three episodes of a six episode series, yeah. right? So we got to watch the first half and it's a little bit of a treat because it's not completely finished. They're adding in some effects later and I think they're probably going to re-edit it a little bit. And three more episodes. Yeah, That's three more episodes. That important part. Um, so I think the first thing that jumped out at me about this that I liked was that it's science fiction which is very rare for Taiwan. They don't, you know, because science fiction takes money, right? Yes. And so it was, it was a, good risk for them to take where you know they're really trying to push the industry forward here where they're gonna like put some money into the effects and this and that to try and make like a sci-fi show yeah for me that was really the main selling point what I like yeah. the most like we actually chose this movie when we we're looking for the festival because it was so different for Taiwan like yeah. Taiwan does a lot of comedy or drama yeah. or dramedy and horror even yeah but, but I think it's the first Taiwanese uh science fiction movie that I've seen at least yeah I can't think of one I'm sure there is one and I'm sure in the comments somebody who's like a will write, nerd it, yeah. will write it down but uh, but yeah it's the first thing I can't think of anything else off the top of my head uh, oh there was a show called Nida Hides the Pussy Nida Hides Your Child is Not Your Child it was on Netflix okay it was sort of a sci-fi thing so it was a little similar um, and this is like a similar kind of a thing to that so the other part of it that I liked and that the director talked about at the screening was that it was an all-female cast. Yes. And that was a choice that they made specifically because they wanted to uh, give more opportunities to actresses. Yes, he said that all the Taiwanese movies, like he can think of all the characters being, the main characters being men, 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 men. So he wanted to have a female lead uh, uh, series. Uh, I did like also that it feels um, plausible. Yeah. You know, like uh, some of the episodes of uh, Black Mirror? Yeah. I think it's like a Taiwanese Black Mirror. Like some of the episodes of right. Black Mirror that you think like, oh my God, this could happen yeah. in 20 years or it's going to happen in five years. Yeah. I feel like the way they design like the, from the clothing to the house to the special effects to, to the story, you think, yes, this could happen right. in 20 years that we're analyzing. I mean... We're gonna give you the whole plot because yeah, we don't want to give it away because uh, it is a new kind of thing. We got like a kind of like a sneak preview and a sneak peek, and it's gonna be out on July. They said okay. June, July, Liu Yue, Yue, right? Yeah, so June, June July. July. Uh, but uh, there's a whole premise of how we analyze our dreams right. to kind of uh, do psychology through visualizing of the dreams. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very little. Yes, but it's if that interests you, you can check it out. Uh, so on the channel, we're always going to go then into what we didn't like about it. What we didn't like. And I thought that the script was a little bit muddy. What did you think? I had a hard time in the beginning connecting all the pieces, and I thought it took a really long time to get to the meat of the story. I agree with you, and actually kind of uh, make peace with it when they told us that, oh, this is actually going to be a series. Okay. What I mean is, like, actually, when it finished, we, all, we, we talked to each other, and we were like, it, it feels like a TV show. Yeah. Like we actually said it. We it feels it was like a TV be a show. Movie when we went in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, because it feels like it's no ending. It's like an open end. 
but too open is it doesn't feel like an open ending of a movie that you can make your own ending it feels like yeah it's a it's, cliffhanger it's all unfinished um, so i think it's more like the benefit of the doubt that within those next three right. episodes these gaps will be clarified because that's what happened with each story to, to play devil's advocate though like so. at each point where they broke the story like the they put in like breakers for each episode so you knew where the new episodes yeah. were starting i just felt like that episode like if i was watching it myself i don't know if i would have wanted to keep watching after the first one and then after the second one like i didn't feel like there was a good uh kind of a cliffhanger in those points for me for that's you what, that's what i felt what i didn't like but I cannot go too in depth because as we said it's going to be out in June July at the beginning something happened something happens a right. character something happens to a character very important it's kind of like what pushes the plot forward yeah it's the inciting incident the inciting incident yeah exactly the inciting incident but then we don't get an explanation of the inciting incident I don't know who this character is yeah, I don't right. know I don't what happened that. you know like as we say like the Who's the gun that you... The smoking... The Chekhov's gun. The Chekhov gun. So you introduce it, a gun in the first scene, you need to pull the trigger in the last in scene. In the last scene. So maybe... In the next one. It will still. be explained in the next three episodes. But I did was like... I felt like, who, who is this character? Why, why do we get this whole chunk at the beginning? Then, yeah. then it's never explained or elaborate after. So... So. I, have a, I have a point that I just want to bring up just before we end. It's like, I definitely love the idea of it. The idea is like that there's like memory and that like there's, there's kind of a connection between the characters' memories and there's a very interesting, intriguing uh, point to the story. But I just felt like there was too many, too many different things that were shoehorned in, like too many subplots. Yeah. And I think this is a problem with the way that people sell scripts now is like everybody wants to sell a show. Whereas I actually think this concept would have been a better movie. Better Whereas movie. if you took that concept and you're like, I'm going to just explore this thing and the whole uh, movie or the whole, you know, show was in the doctor's office and that was it. It was like a play in a doctor's office or a movie in a doctor's office and then they kept using the memory to go back and forth. Yeah. It would have been a tighter thing. But because it's a show, they have like subplot with the husband and a subplot with the daughter and a subplot with the mom and a subplot with this. And it's just too many things going on. Now playing Devil's Advocate, I think making movies anywhere... Yeah. It's difficult. Sure. I think in Taiwan especially. I mean, yeah. you've tried yeah, to make yeah. shorts. I've worked in production for a little bit. Getting money is hard. It's the hardest thing anywhere. And I think in Taiwan especially. So if you have now that there's so many big streaming platforms in yeah. Taiwan, like not just Netflix, but there are a lot of local ones yeah. like my video. And, and that's what this will be on. This will be on my video. Uh, I think it's probably a lot of producers and directors think that that's a better way to yeah it's a better oppor more opportunities more chances exactly more opportunities you can more get chances. your money to make your thing so no, no shade. let me think I'm trying to think what else did I really like I really like the concept I really like the yeah. risk I, I really really like the design yep and I like how they found ways to well we live in Taiwan we live in Taipei so places they manage to find places that you think like oh i know where this is and yet it feels like the future you know what yeah, i mean yeah I, i agree i agree it feels like you're in the future they did very little special effects and and yet you feel like we're in 2049 or whoever yeah. and yet the recognizable places in taipei uh let's do a little special effects right now and we'll get luke in here to talk about the camera <laughs> everybody is, is, uh, is a look right now so I would like to talk a little bit about this kind of, this movie. It's, it's, for me, it's also very happy to see this kind of sci-fi uh, movie is, is produced. Yeah. And it's, it's very impressed by me. Is uh, We could totally have the ability to make this kind of after effect. I, I agree. The, the effects are... I mean, I mentioned it when, when Nick was here that it's they're really good. You, you, yeah. you, you think... I mean... It doesn't look fake. I mean, as simple as that. You you believe that this is happening in 20 years, 30 years, yeah. 40 years. Uh, and the actors interact with the effects quite... Quite naturally. Yeah, so and, and really obviously a post-production effect. So it's very impressive. So when you shoot this, when they're shooting this, they have to... Plan before you shoot. Exactly, plan before you shoot. So then they can do... They can do 
you can do the effect afterward. Otherwise, you won't able to to combine it together. And also the way the machine you use, the, the way you the setting the machine is totally different from the, the traditional similar photographer, similar similar camera. So is I really wanted to Google who 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 is going to really. Uh, I mean, this is not easy. I believe it's not the first time in Taiwan trying to make sci-fi film, but this one definitely worthwhile to check because the technology. In Taiwan, to to do it is already mature enough to do, yeah to do yeah. As I said at the very beginning, I was very impressed because, to me at least, is the first science fiction. Well, it's a series. It's not a movie. It's a se- yeah, but it's it was presented to us as a movie first. Uh, I've never seen something like that in Taiwan, and I, I thought the effects were great. I thought the, the, the whole plot of the future was pretty pretty good. Yeah, so for me, the the the, the video image wise for this this show is nothing major error. It's it's pleasant to watch. Yeah, but in some way, like uh, I mean, the character design, the clothing, I mean, sometimes confused a little bit for me. It seems to be you should stick one style to the end. Sometimes they mix together, right? The, the two main edges. Wearing the clothes, sometimes they just switch styles. Yeah. Like, like some, uh, you can see the the man actress always wear some very common kind of formal. Formal. Yeah. Right? And but the other one sometimes wear the kind of clothes as well. Formal. So you. So get... a little confused. Yeah, I I agree. The two main characters. I mean, we don't want to give away too much, but the two main characters. They do seem too similar, and I don't mean physically. I mean like the way they react. They don't seem to have very different yeah, personality, personalities. Personalities, really. I think. But again, we, I mean, we cannot but give we too much, know. but because we don't know because we haven't seen the last three episodes. Yeah. And the whole plot is that they have something in common. So maybe this it was done on purpose. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was done on purpose. purpose. So interesting. But I agree that the differentiation of the characters. From personality to clothing, to many things, is not uh, very clear. Yeah, I agree. Any key points that you really like, or something that you really don't like? Uh, Thank one, you. One, no? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. The way they talk is something I don't really like. The way they talk. The, the way they talk, like. Why I don't get that because the I'm sentence, not. The sentence. The sentence. They speak is not usually we talk to each other. In, I mean, obviously they 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 writing the conversation, the dialogue. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, pretty strict. But it's too strict, like almost like okay, they are writing a textbook. Too direct. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's not really something we will talk naturally, normally. It's like okay, I'm going to give you a li- literature, something like that. Uh, so, do you think is because it's in the future, or because know. of the because of the job of the of one of the character, because one of the character is is a, 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 a professional stuff. But maybe maybe it's because she's doing her work. Yeah. But still, for me, it's a little bit too not not a natural com- com- dialogue. Yeah. yeah so not a natural. Other than that, the video is great. The the interior design is nice. Yes. The I lighting, really like that. The lighting, especially the lighting, is good, and the image is fantastic. As, as far as I can tell, as a TV show, which is pretty good enough, it's pretty amazed by by the images. Yeah. So check it out. It's coming out. They said in June, July. Yeah. What's the name in Chinese? Subway Fighter. Subway Fighter. Alin Zetio. So I'm Duo Duo from Duo Duo loves Taiwan. And I'm very happy that Mint Volcano invited me to come here today. And what do they have to do? Look, what to do? You have to like, subscribe, subscribe and leave comment. And leave a comment, share with your friends, and also right. click on the bell so you can be notified next time they put a new video. Right? See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye.